Who do people say that the Son of Man is? Matthew 16 verse 13. This question has echoed through time for over 2,000 years. Who was Jesus, really? For many, he is the divine Son of God, but others have wondered if his story is something more complex, maybe even shaped by history in ways we're just beginning to understand. As we unravel this story, we're going to explore the idea that Jesus' narrative might have been influenced by powerful forces like the Roman Empire, and how his life was intertwined with ancient beliefs and myths from different cultures. Before we dive deep, I just want to take a moment to greet all of you, my fellow celestial seekers. I hope you'll join me on this journey, share your thoughts in the chat, and don't forget to explore our other thought-provoking videos. Historical Manipulation, A New Perspective Let's imagine what life was like in the Roman Empire during the time of Jesus. Rome wasn't just a land of gladiators and emperors, it was an empire constantly managing different cultures, religions, and people. The Romans didn't just conquer lands, they also influenced the beliefs of those they ruled. For a long time, Rome was a place filled with gods and traditions from all over, Greek gods, Egyptian deities, and even Persian beliefs were part of the mix. As Christianity started to grow, some believed that the Roman authorities realized they could use religion to unify their vast empire. But the big question is, how much did Rome shape the story of Jesus? Think about it. For centuries, empires have used religion to control people and keep the peace. If the Roman Empire saw an opportunity to use Jesus' message of love, forgiveness, and peace to calm unrest, would they have done it? Did they see in Jesus' teachings a way to help stabilize their rule? It's entirely possible that elements of his story were amplified, emphasized, or even adjusted to suit the empire's political needs. When Emperor Constantine converted to Christianity in the 4th century, it wasn't just a personal choice, it was a major turning point. Christianity, which had once been a small, persecuted faith, became the official religion of the Roman Empire. This move helped unify Rome's diverse populations under a single belief system. But could Constantine's embrace of Christianity have also influenced which parts of Jesus' story were highlighted or diminished? What if certain aspects of his life were left out or even changed to align with Roman values and goals? There are also many examples of historical manipulation by those in power. Take ancient rulers like the pharaohs, who used religion to claim divine authority. Or think about how political leaders today use stories to sway public opinion. It's not hard to see how the story of Jesus could have been carefully shaped, in much the same way, to serve a larger agenda. But here's where it gets even more interesting. Some historians argue that early Christian leaders might have intentionally left out certain writings or teachings that didn't fit their vision of who Jesus should be. The Gospels that were included in the Bible were chosen from many other writings, some of which offered different views on Jesus' life and teachings. Why were some texts accepted while others were rejected? Was it purely based on religious grounds, or could politics have played a role? So, could the Roman Empire have had a hand in shaping Jesus' story for their benefit? It's a question worth asking. But what do you think? Could historical manipulation have influenced the narrative of Jesus that we know today? Let's talk about it in the chat. I'm eager to hear your thoughts. The many faces of the Messiah. The idea of a savior or a Messiah wasn't something new during the time of Jesus. In fact, many cultures and religions had stories of figures who performed miracles, healed the sick, and even conquered death. These stories were circulating long before Jesus' birth, and they influenced the people of that time in deep ways. Let's consider some of these earlier examples. In the ancient Persian religion, there was a god named Mithras. Mithras was said to have been born from a virgin, just like Jesus. He also performed miracles, and his followers believed he brought salvation to the world. Another figure, Horus, from ancient Egyptian mythology, was a god who was also born to a virgin and performed miraculous deeds. He was associated with light, much like how Jesus is often referred to as the light of the world. These similarities raise important questions. Could the story of Jesus have been influenced by these earlier figures? In a world where myths and religious stories were shared across cultures, it's possible that elements of Jesus' narrative were shaped by beliefs already present in the Roman Empire. People were familiar with stories of gods and saviors, so the story of Jesus might have resonated more with them if it echoed these familiar themes. The concept of a dying and rising god was also widespread in ancient religions. For example, in Greek mythology, there was a god named Dionysus who was said to have died and returned to life. In many ancient stories, gods would descend into the underworld and come back, symbolizing victory over death. When we hear about Jesus' resurrection, it's natural to wonder if this idea was something new or if it was part of a larger, more ancient tradition. But here's what's fascinating, despite these similarities, the message of Jesus was unique. 
His focus on love, forgiveness, and humility set him apart from many of the gods of the time, who often sought power and glory. Jesus wasn't about ruling kingdoms or seeking wealth, he spoke of a different kind of kingdom, one of the heart and soul. Still, it's worth asking, did the early followers of Jesus draw on these earlier myths to help spread his message? If people were already familiar with stories of miraculous births and divine powers, it would make sense for Jesus' story to be presented in ways they could understand and accept. Some scholars think this might have helped Christianity grow so quickly, especially in a world where people were looking for hope and salvation during difficult times. What do you think? Could these earlier stories have shaped the way Jesus' life was told and remembered? And if so, does it change how we understand his significance? Let's discuss your thoughts in the chat. The Role of the Roman Empire in Christianity's Rise When we talk about the spread of Christianity, we often focus on Jesus' teachings and the devotion of his early followers. But there's another important factor to consider, the Roman Empire. Rome, with its vast reach and influence, played a major role in the growth of Christianity, even though the empire didn't start out as an ally of the new faith. In the early years, Christians were often persecuted by Roman authorities. The Roman Empire saw this new religion as a threat. Christianity was different from the traditional Roman religions that worshipped multiple gods and followed the emperor's authority. Christians refused to worship the emperor as a god, which caused tension and made them targets for persecution. Early Christians were often imprisoned, tortured, and even killed because of their beliefs. But then something changed. By the 4th century, the Roman Empire began to embrace Christianity, and much of that shift can be traced to Emperor Constantine. Constantine was one of the most powerful leaders in Roman history, and his decision to convert to Christianity was a turning point. In 312 AD, before a major battle, Constantine claimed to have had a vision of a cross in the sky, accompanied by the words, in this sign, you will conquer. After winning the battle, he credited his victory to the Christian God and converted to Christianity. Constantine's conversion was more than just a personal decision, it had huge consequences for the Roman Empire and the future of Christianity. Shortly after his conversion, he issued the Edict of Milan, which granted religious tolerance to Christians and allowed them to worship openly without fear of persecution. For the first time, Christianity was legally protected in the Roman Empire, and this marked the beginning of its rapid expansion. However, Constantine didn't just stop at legalizing Christianity. He actively promoted the religion and worked to strengthen its influence throughout the empire. He provided financial support for the construction of churches and helped organize the early Christian church. In fact, Constantine played a key role in the Council of Nicaea in 325 AD, a gathering of bishops that helped establish key Christian doctrines, such as the nature of Jesus and the concept of the Trinity. But why did Constantine, a ruler of a pagan empire, embrace Christianity so fully? Some historians suggest that his decision was not only spiritual but also political. The Roman Empire was vast and diverse, filled with people of different cultures, religions, and traditions. By adopting Christianity, Constantine might have seen an opportunity to unify his empire under one religion. Christianity's message of peace, forgiveness, and unity could help bring stability to an empire that was struggling with internal divisions and external threats. Constantine's embrace of Christianity also opened the door for the Roman Empire to influence the development of the religion. As Christianity grew in power, the Roman authorities may have played a role in shaping its teachings and practices. Some scholars believe that the Roman Empire helped decide which Gospels and texts were included in the Bible, favoring those that aligned with their vision of a unified, peaceful religion. Other texts, like the Gnostic Gospels, were left out, possibly because they presented ideas that didn't fit with the Roman agenda. In the end, Constantine's conversion and the Roman Empire's adoption of Christianity were critical to the religion's rise. Without the support of Rome, Christianity might have remained a small, persecuted sect. But with the power of the empire behind it, the religion grew rapidly, spreading across Europe and eventually becoming one of the most influential forces in history. Yet, this raises important questions, how much of Christianity's success was due to divine providence, and how much was the result of strategic political decisions? Could the Roman Empire have influenced not just the spread of Christianity, but also the way it was practiced and understood? These are big questions to think about, and they remind us that history is rarely simple. What do you think? Could Constantine's political motives have played a bigger role in the rise of Christianity than we often realize? Let's talk about it in the comments. Apollonius of Tyana, a forgotten rival to Jesus? While Jesus is the central figure of Christianity, there was another man living around the same time whose life story bears striking similarities to his, Apollonius of Tyana. Apollonius was a Greek philosopher and mystic who, like Jesus, was said to have performed miracles, traveled widely, 
and preached a message of spiritual enlightenment. But unlike Jesus, Apollonius hasn't remained as well known, and many people today have never even heard of him. So, why did Apollonius' story fade while Jesus' story became the foundation of a major world religion? Apollonius was born in what is now Turkey around 15 AD, just a few years after Jesus' birth. He grew up studying philosophy and became a follower of Pythagoras, a Greek philosopher known for his teachings on mathematics, spirituality, and the immortality of the soul. Apollonius lived a life of asceticism, meaning he gave up material comforts and devoted himself to learning and spiritual practice. Much like Jesus, he traveled extensively, teaching others about the importance of living a virtuous life, worshipping the gods, and seeking inner wisdom. One of the most fascinating aspects of Apollonius' life is the numerous reports of his miraculous deeds. His followers believed that he could heal the sick, predict the future, and even raise the dead. These accounts sound remarkably similar to the miracles attributed to Jesus in the Gospels. Apollonius was also said to have performed these miracles without seeking fame or recognition, much like how Jesus refused to perform miracles just to impress others. Both figures were seen as wise men who attracted disciples, and both were ultimately regarded as divine by their followers. But the similarities don't stop there. Apollonius, like Jesus, was accused of challenging the religious and political authorities of his time. He was brought before the Roman Emperor Domitian on charges of being a troublemaker and practicing magic. According to his biographer, Philostratus, Apollonius defended himself with such wisdom and calmness that he was released without punishment. This trial echoes the trial of Jesus before Pontius Pilate, though the outcome for Apollonius was much different. So why is it that most people today know the story of Jesus but not the story of Apollonius? Some historians suggest that early Christian leaders may have intentionally downplayed the similarities between the two to avoid competition. After all, if both Jesus and Apollonius were seen as miracle workers and teachers of spiritual truths, it would have been harder for Christianity to establish Jesus as the one true divine figure. By focusing on Jesus and his unique role as the Son of God, early Christians could build a stronger, more distinct faith that would appeal to a wide audience. It's also possible that Apollonius' teachings didn't fit neatly into the emerging Christian worldview. Apollonius was a follower of the Greek gods, and his teachings were rooted in Greek philosophy. This was quite different from the Jewish and Christian traditions that shaped Jesus' life and message. As Christianity spread, it needed to set itself apart from these older, polytheistic traditions, and that may have led to Apollonius being pushed into the background of history. What's interesting to consider is how different the world might have been if Apollonius had become as famous as Jesus. Would his philosophy have shaped a new religion? Or would he, like many other historical figures, have been remembered only by scholars and historians? The story of Apollonius invites us to think about how history is shaped, not just by the people who live it but by those who tell the stories afterward. What do you think? Could the early Christian church have intentionally diminished the story of Apollonius to make Jesus' narrative more dominant? Or was it simply a case of one figure resonating more with the people of the time? Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Challenging the conventional story. As we look at the story of Jesus from different angles, it's clear that what we know today might only be part of the picture. The traditional view of Jesus as the divine Son of God, performing miracles and preaching a message of salvation, has been told for centuries. But there are many aspects of his story that invite deeper exploration and even challenge conventional thinking. Could Jesus' life and the rise of Christianity have been shaped by factors that go beyond faith? Could political agendas, cultural influences, and historical manipulation have played a larger role than we often acknowledge? One of the key challenges to the conventional story of Jesus is the idea that his life and teachings were influenced by earlier religious figures, myths, and traditions. As we've seen, many ancient cultures had stories of gods and saviors who performed miracles, were born of virgins, and conquered death. The striking similarities between these figures and Jesus raise the question, was the story of Jesus entirely unique, or did it build upon existing beliefs that were already familiar to the people of that time? This doesn't mean that Jesus wasn't real or that his teachings weren't profound. But it does make us wonder how much of what we know about him was influenced by the cultural context in which he lived. The Roman Empire was a vast and diverse place, filled with people who had grown up with stories of gods like Mithras, Osiris, and Dionysus. If early Christians wanted to spread their message, they may have found it helpful to shape Jesus' story in ways that would resonate with these existing beliefs. This could explain why certain elements of his life, such as his virgin birth, his miracles, and his resurrection, are so similar to the myths of other gods. Another challenge to the traditional story comes from the role of the Roman Empire in the spread of Christianity. As we discussed earlier, the conversion of Emperor Constantine was a major turning point. 
Christianity, once a small, persecuted group, became the official religion of the Roman Empire. But with that official support came influence. The Roman Empire, known for using religion to maintain control, may have shaped certain aspects of Christian doctrine to fit its political needs. For example, some historians believe that the selection of the Gospels included in the New Testament was influenced by Roman leaders, who favored texts that aligned with their vision of a unified, peaceful religion. These ideas don't diminish the importance of Jesus' message. In fact, they may help us understand how his teachings spread so widely and why they resonated with so many people. But they do invite us to question what we've been told and to explore the possibility that the story of Jesus, like many stories throughout history, was shaped by both divine inspiration and human hands. What do you think? Does looking at Jesus' life through a historical lens change your perspective on his story? Do you believe that political or cultural influences played a role in how we understand his teachings today? I'd love to hear your thoughts, so feel free to share them in the comments. Let's keep the conversation going as we explore these fascinating questions together.